Hello there. Today we're going to show you. Hello there. Today we are going to be showing you our acoustics final project. For our project, we decided to 3D print some musical instruments, specifically the ocarina. Our hypothesis was that ocarinas with a higher infill density would have a warmer or darker tone. The ocarina is a simple wind instrument that essentially functions as a Helmholtz resonator. In order for something to be considered a Helmholtz resonator, it must have some key features, which include um, a nipple, which the, is an opening in which air can enter, a cylindrical body that is connected to the nipple, and when air is either blown across or into the nipple, a sound is emitted. And we can see that the equation to determine the frequency from a Helmholtz resonator is as follows. We have F equals 2, which is frequency, F equals the speed of sound C over 2 pi, multiplied by the square root of S, the surface area of the opening, um, divided by VL, where V is the volume of the body, and L being the length of the nipple or the neck that connects to the body of the Helmholtz resonator. Altering the amount of holes covered or uncovered changes the surface area, S, and because the variable S is in the numerator of the equation, the ocarina will produce its highest frequency when all the holes remain uncovered because of this extra surface area. It's also worth noting that the location of the holes does not matter. Some other conclusions that can be drawn from the Helmholtz or ocarina equation is that Ocarinas with larger volumes will produce an overall lower frequency, and ocarinas with longer necks will also produce lower frequencies. The ocarina is also an instrument that is particularly difficult to play in tune because both the air temperature and the amount of pressure blown into the ocarina affect the intonation of each note differently. Many ocarinas are designed to operate at specific temperatures to help the performer have better intonation or play in tune better. Colder environments would make the instrument louder and raise the intonation, resulting in the ocarina producing higher frequencies because of the denser air. The inverse would also be true in that warmer environments would make the ocarina less loud and lower intonation due to the air being less dense. So as we can see, there's an equation for determining the loudness of an ocarina with loudness L being equal to V, the air velocity, divided by the angular frequency. But assuming that angular frequency is just 2 pi divided by the period, we can deduce that loudness would, could also be equal to 2 pi multiplied by the air velocity multiplied by the frequency because period is just the inverse of frequency. So that means a greater air velocity or a higher frequency would make the ocarina louder. 3D printers may seem like extremely new technology, but they're actually kind of old. The first 3D printer was actually invented in the 1980s, and ever since then, several different types of 3D printers have been constructed. These 3D printer types include stereolithography, the type used for the first 3D printer, fused deposition modeling, the type of 3D printer that we used, digital light processing, selective laser sintering, selective laser melting, laminated object manufacturing, and digital beam melting. When you want to prepare a 3D model for 3D printing, first you need to import it into a special kind of software known as a slicer. Inside of a slicer, you're able to preview the model that you want to 3D print. To get it ready for printing, however, you have to choose between a lot of different settings and you can see them here. So we have quality, walls, top and bottom, infill, material, speed, travel, cooling, support, build plate adhesion, and dual extrusion. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go through all of them, but for our experiment, we looked at infill. The infill density refers to how much material is being used in between the walls of a print. So looking at our print here, we can see that he's very wide, and on the inside we can control how much material is inside. For instance, at 100% density, it will fill 100% of the inside. At 50% density, it will fill 50% of the inside. And it does that through several different 3D printing patterns that you can see here. 
One other thing to note is that you cannot actually change the material of 3D printing within the Slicer software. Instead, you just set the printing and build plate temperature specifications for the type of material that you're going to use. The two types of material that we used are PLA and PETG, or PETG. For our experiment, we wanted to test how the material used when 3D printing and the infill density selected will affect the resulting tone of the ocarina. To do this, we printed six different ocarinas. Three ocarinas were printed with the PETG material, the other three were printed with the PLA material. We varied the infill density like this. 20% infill density, 50% infill density, and 100% infill density. All right, number one or number two? Number one. Number two. I don't know, man, they both sound pretty bad. The findings of our experiment were inconclusive. For all six ocarinas with different infill densities and materials, no significant difference could be concluded in the frequency content between all six of them. In the future, if we were to continue this experiment, we'd probably try messing with some more 3D print settings rather than the material. You see, what we changed was infill density. And infill, as we said before, is the amount of material used to fill the inside of a 3D print. But that's just the material between the walls of a 3D print. If we look at an ocarina, we can see that the inside is very hollow, meaning that the walls are both on the outside and on the inside. Infill density only affects the amount of material used in between the two walls. And because the walls are very close together, the impact of infill density is actually very small. If we were to change the thickness of the walls, infill density would have a much larger impact. And that concludes our experiment.